You're about to learn how to edit videos with Adobe Premiere Rush step-by-step -step in this complete Adobe Rush tutorial. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Adobe Premiere Rush is the much hyped cross-platform video editing app from Adobe. It was originally codenamed Project Rush and it promises a seamless editing experience to edit your videos down across multiple devices, including Windows, Mac, iPhone, iPad, and launching soon, Android 2. So in this video, we're gonna do a full tutorial and walkthrough, taking you through step-by-step -step exactly how to edit your videos with Rush, our favorite features to improve your video editing workflow, and how to use Adobe Rush like a pro. It will be following the primal video editing process to help you reduce rework and save time as we go. So stick around to the end because I'll also link you to a downloadable version that you can print out and follow along with next time you're editing your projects. And let me know in the comments, what's your biggest question regarding Rush? Take a look and see if you can help others out in the community with theirs as well. Now, just before we jump into this tutorial slash walkthrough, just remember that this is a cross-platform application or cross-platform software. It's going to look almost exactly the same no matter which device you're using, but there will be some minor differences with mainly just the location of the buttons and the options and those sorts of things. So we'll start out on the iPhone, but I will jump across to the computer as well and just show you some of those differences. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Rush. You can see I've got one project that's already started there called Instagram Stories. What we're gonna do is create a brand new project. So we'll press the plus button down the bottom and it'll ask us what do we wanna do? Do we wanna add media that's already on our phone or on our device or do we wanna take photo or video using the phone's built-in camera to add media that way? So we'll just go add media to add some that's already on our device. Uh, let's choose camera roll. I'll pick two clips here. We'll come down the bottom and give our project a name. Let's call this wide screen video. Here return. And then we've got the option down the bottom to sync with CC or Creative Cloud. So if you want this project and this footage to be available on other devices in Adobe Rush, then you'll leave that box ticked. So we'll hit create. That'll create a new project with those two video files in it. And it'll start to upload those video files through to the Creative Cloud. So you can see in the top corner there, it's going through and processing and uploading those videos right away. So let's give you a really quick rundown of the overall interface here. This is in portrait. If you do rotate your phone to the side, you'll be able to play back, but you currently can't edit in landscape, only in portrait, so we'll rotate back. So starting from the top, we've got our undo and redo button up the top here. If we long press on that, you can see we get those options. We've got our share and export button up the top here. Then we've got our send feedback button. Moving down to the middle there below our playback screen, we've got our playback controls. Then obviously we've got our actual timeline here, which we'll cover in a lot more detail very, very soon. Well, there you go, I'm even waving in this shot, awesome. <laughs> and down the bottom is where we've got all of our tools. So the plus button, bottom left, that'll let us add in photos or video from our device's camera. We can add in titles, we can add in extra media as we've done already and record voiceovers as well. The next one across is our project panel. And this will show us all our project files or all the files and assets and things that we're already using inside of this editing project. Close out of that. The next one across is to change our timeline view. So we're currently in like a simple or basic timeline view. If we press this next button, we can change to a more advanced, more traditional style timeline for editing our videos. So we'll switch it back to the basic view. Next one across is where we go to reformat our video or choose the style of video we're creating, whether it's landscape, portrait, or square. And then moving along the other buttons down the bottom, we've got titles, transitions, color, and audio. And if we swipe along, we've got transform in there as well, cut, duplicate, delete. And the second last one there expands our audio out. So you can actually see those waveforms much bigger. And the last one changes our selection tool. All right, so now let's get into some actual editing. So you can see we've got a couple of clips in the timeline there. If we do wanna add in any more, we'll come down to the bottom left and either hit media again and import extra footage or We'll go back there and choose capture. And you can see that we've got the phone screen up on display here. Now, as you can see on the screen here, we've also got two modes down the bottom. We've got auto 
which it's on now. And if we switch to pro mode, so we've got options in here to lock down your exposure. You can adjust your white balance or the color temperature. You can set your camera focus to lock everything down. So this is really cool to have all these advanced features in the camera app. Now I'm just on the front facing camera here. If we switch to the rear camera, we can get some more options and things on here as well. Look at this great shot of a cable. Um, you can see down the bottom corner here, we go here where you can see it, put it on the dark bit. You can see that we can change the frame rate. So it's currently set to 1080p 120 frames per second. If I press on that, we can adjust the frames that we're recording. So I'll back out of this now, hitting that X in the top corner. But it's just good to know that you can actually record your footage directly in this app as well, and with all of those advanced features. So the first step is to go through, import all of your video footage, and then you wanna start cutting it down. So all you need to do to start cutting it down is to select on the clip that you wanna adjust. Now we can pinch to zoom, so we can zoom in on the timeline here to get some more control. You wanna click on one of these handles. So these orange things on either side are called handles. So if we press and hold on that and swipe across to the right, you can see that we're actually changing the start time of this clip. So let's go right after I wave here. Let's say we want to start it here, we'll just let go. And that now is the start of our video. So you go through and start cutting down your footage, you'd adjust the start times and the end times of the clips here uh, for all of the clips in your timeline. So we're doing some basic editing here first. So we want to start there, finish just before we get to the door. Let's bring that back to there. So that's the most basic level of editing, adjusting the start time and the end time. Now if you want to get a bit more advanced, say we've got a section in the middle here we want to cut out, we would make sure that that clip is selected. And we come down the bottom here, you might need to scroll across, but what you're looking for is the pair of scissors. And you can see now we've cut that clip in two. And again, when you select them, you can adjust those handles to adjust the clips. Or if you wanna remove a chunk out of the middle of your video, we can come across and add another cut so that we've split that clip again. We can zoom out a little bit so you can see this clearer. We've now made it into three clips. We can select the middle one and press the trash can down the bottom there and that clip will be deleted and that gap will be closed. Now, if you wanna pick up and rearrange any clips around, you can just press and hold on them and swap the order of them around. So it's really, really easy to reposition and realign and trim all of your clips down. So those are the first steps. So for this video here so far, we've got some footage of me walking around talking to the camera and then we've got a shot of walking outside. Now, if we wanna show this shot of walking outside, over while I'm actually talking here. We can just pick the clip up and we can lift it above and let it go. And that clip is now going to play on top of the footage that is still playing underneath it. So all the audio, we'll still hear that from the clip below it, but we'll be seeing what's going on on the top. And just the same as every other video clip, we can shorten this down by tapping on it and grabbing that handle and sliding it in so that now we've start on me talking we then cut to this shot of walking outside and then back to me at the end. And again, for some more advanced control over this layering, if you're gonna have heaps of layers stacked up, you can come over here and enable the more advanced timeline view. Just a different way to see everything laid out. Okay, so you've got all your footage in, you've now got your B-roll or your overlay footage in. Next, you might wanna add in some titles. So we'll come to where we want the title added, probably near the start here. We'll come down the bottom to titles and let's choose your styles. Now in here, there's a heap of different presets and things you can use, different types of animations and call outs and things. Let's just pick this one here, orange sherbet left. So we'll select on that one, press and hold, drag it up onto our timeline and it has now appeared up there. Now, if you wanna edit the text on that title, then we'll come up the top and double tap where it says main title and we can type in the new title. Justin Brown, let's go to the subtitle again, we'll double tap on that. And we'll type in Primal Video. Now if we wanna actually change how that title looks, then we'll double tap on that clip for the title in our timeline. So if we double tap on that, then you can see here we can bring up each of those two title layers. So Justin Brown, we can adjust the font, we can adjust the size. We can really customize this up to match our brand at this point. So for us, if we go font, our font is Oswald, which is there. We might come down here to shape and let's change it from orange 
to some sort of blue. Cool. And likewise, we can do exactly the same for the other layer there as well. So if we go shape for the bottom one, we can change the shadow down to a blue as well. Now, obviously you wanna pick your own colors for your own consistent branding here, but these titles, you can fully customize them up. Now, if we back out of this now by pressing titles again at the bottom, that'll hide it all. Now, just like all the other clips, we'll just zoom in on the timeline here, we get those handles for the titles as well. So we can adjust the start time and the end time just by lengthening or shortening the clip. And we can pick it up and we can move it around to adjust its start and end time. So at the start of the video, it's me talking, then this title appears, and then it goes away at that point. So you can see, super simple. Now, if we wanna add in some transitions, maybe we wanna transition bringing in this effect here. Let me come down to transitions. And what I like here is that there's not a heap of really terrible looking transitions. These are the only ones that we ever recommend for people to actually use. And these are the only ones that are in here. So you've got cross dissolve, which is a basic fade in. If we scrub back along, you can see that it just fades across. But for something like this, what I recommend is that you're using something like maybe a dip to white. It might look better in this case, in which case it'll just look like it's flashing up. So it flashes across and maybe we'll have a flash at the end. There you go. So super simple to add transitions in. Press again, transitions to hide that. Okay, so once you've got your footage in, you've got any titles in, you've got any transitions on your timeline, next you can add in some music. So we'll hit that plus button down the bottom left hand corner. Let's choose media. Let's find audio. Now if you've got any music tracks on your phone that you wanna use, then you can find those in here. But there is also some in here from Rush. So we'll just pick one of theirs, Rush soundtracks. And let's just pick bend. So we'll tap on that, hit add. That's now added down into our timeline. And you can see it plays for the length of our video. Now, if we zoom out, you'll see that the music track is much longer than our actual video. So we can come down here to where we want that to finish. Select the clip, go across to our scissors to cut it at that point. Select the remainder of it and just press the trash can to remove it. So now our music just goes for the length of our video. Now, what you'll probably find now is that your volumes could be out. So the music could be too loud or the spoken part in your videos might be too quiet. So now you just want to adjust your volume levels. So you can do that on a clip by clip basis. So let's pick our first video clip here and come down the bottom to audio. And you can see here we've got clip volume and we can adjust that up and down to make that louder or quieter but they do have some really cool features in here to help you out with adjusting your volumes. So you can see here that it's detected me talking as voice. The type of the audio is detected is someone talking. So it's set to auto volume, where it's gonna boost that up to the right volume level for us. Now you've also got things in here like reduce background noise or reduce echo, or to enhance the speech to help you get the best out of the audio. So we'll just leave that and leave it as auto volume and press the audio button to go back out of it. And you wanna make sure that that is correct for all of the clips in your timeline. So I'll pick the next one there, check the audio. It should be exactly the same because we hadn't really changed anything. Set to auto volume and it was detected as voice. Perfect. So now let's look at the music. Select the music, go to audio, and you can see it's been detected as music. And it's also got auto volume selected. So it's gonna automatically have that volume lower than the actual voice. So it's awesome that all of this is done automatically. You don't have to manually set everything. Now there's another feature here called auto duck. Now what that does is it'll play the music loud when it's not detecting anyone speaking, me in this case, in this video. And then whenever I'm speaking, it's gonna lower the music down. It's gonna duck it down for the length of time while I'm actually speaking. And then it will bring the music volume back up after I've stopped talking. So that's where that auto duck is. And it's another really amazing feature. But for this video, I'm just gonna leave it off and we'll go back out of our video. Now, if you need to zoom in or change the framing of any of your shots, then we can do that using the transform tool down the bottom here. So we'll just come across on our video. We'll add a cut in our timeline at this point here so that we've just split this clip in two. Now let's say this second clip here, we want to zoom in on that to make the shot look a little bit different or like we've changed the angle or something. So with that selected, we'll come down the bottom to transform and in here we can scale up the shot. So if we grab one width and slide that slider up, we can zoom in on the shot. We can then come back up here and adjust the horizontal and the vertical position of our shot 
or we can tap in the screen there and just pick it up and move it around so that it looks how we want. Now you've also got some other advanced tools in here as well to crop the shot. If there's something you wanna crop out of it when you're scaling it up or moving it around, then you've got those tools in here as well. So we'll hop back out of this now, press the transform, and you can see that we've got our first shot here. And as we hit that cut, we now zoom in to a closer version of it. So it's an easy, simple way to do things like jump cuts in your videos. Okay, so now that our video is getting close to being finished, you now wanna jump in and take a look at the color and fix any colors or apply any color grade. So select your first clip in the timeline, come down to the bottom here to color. And you can see here, there are a heap of different presets built in. And when I say a heap, there really are a heap of these things. Now, if there's one of these that closely matches the look that you're after, then I'd suggest starting with that. And then you can either use it as is, or you can customize it up further. To customize it up further, say we want this one here, then we can come across to edit, and we've got all of those settings there applied, and we can go through and make further adjustments to it to really dial in the look that you're after. Now just going back here to presets, you don't have to start with a preset, you can just go none, and just edit and dial in your own settings here to get things looking the way that you'd like it. What I would suggest you do though, because there is no way to now apply this effect to all of our clips in the timeline, I'd suggest you save your settings as a preset yourself. So if you hit these three little dots up here, you can then choose create preset. You can give it a name, JB preset, hit save. Now when we press color down the bottom to get back out of that, our second clip here doesn't have that color grade applied. So all we need to do is apply that as well. So select the clip, press on color. We can go to presets and ours will be down the bottom there, JB preset, tap on that, that's now applied to our clip. Now you wanna go through and apply that to all of the clips that you want that grade applied to, or go through and set different filters for each of the clips in your timeline. So I'll go across this last one here, hit on color, and apply that preset there as well. So once you've finished editing down your video, all you need to do then is come up to the top right corner here and hit the export button. And then you get to adjust your quality settings here from automatic 720p or 1080p. Now it's giving us these options because our original footage that we used here was 1080p footage. I'd say for most people, you're just able to leave that on automatic because it's detected the best settings for you based on the footage that we were using in that. Hit export and that will save the file out to your phone. Once your video files finish saving, you've then got direct links to upload it to the social media platforms. Now, if we jump over to the computer now and open up Premiere Rush, you can see that we've now got our new project there automatically. So if we click to open that, here is our exact same project that we're able to scrub through. There's our titles, our music's in there. That was our cropped in shot. We've then got our transition flash, our B-roll here walking outside, another flash back to the end of the video. So just having that ability to transfer from your mobile or from your iPad directly to your computer is just insane. So the only main differences that you'll see on the desktop version is that the tool layouts are a little bit different. They're not all along the bottom. You've got a lot of your tools, the same tools along the top right side here with the remainder along the left side. One of the other main features that you get access to on the desktop or the computer version over the smartphone is under share or where you go to export, you actually now get some more options. So you get to save the video out locally to your computer. You'll also get to create different versions in here specifically for YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram as well. And you can actually select multiple versions. So if you wanna output a version for YouTube, you can select that. For Facebook, you can enable that. Instagram, so on. And then when you go to actually export it and hit export down the bottom here, then you're gonna save out all of those different versions which are designed specifically with the right formats in mind to go out to each one of those platforms. So we'll back this up a little bit here and we'll go back to edit. Now one of the other big features in Rush, which is on the mobile version and the desktop version, is the ability to change your project format. Not just at the start of a project or before you start the project, but at any time while you're editing the project down. So if we wanna reformat this to now become an Instagram story, on the phone there's just a simple button down the bottom to switch between the different formats. On the desktop version, you'll have to come up to sequence and then choose orientation and let's choose vertical. Let's say we wanna convert this to an Instagram story. But now what you wanna do is go through and scale up and reposition everything so that it fits for that new format. So all you need to do is select your clips, come over to the transform tool, and then you can either use these sliders here on the side, or you can select your clip in the preview monitor here and scale them up and resize them around so that they fit for that new format. 
So that was that shot. Now let's do the title as well. I'll select the title. We'll do it this way. We'll come over here and slide that up. And let's just change the horizontal position. Maybe up a little bit as well. So we can easily reformat our existing video content that we've edited down for different formats as well, which is really, really powerful. So now we have a fully repurposed version of our widescreen video now ready to be rolled out in portrait to places like Instagram for stories. All right, so that was the complete editing walkthrough in Adobe Rush. Now make sure you grab a copy of the Primal Video Method, which is a free download linked on screen now, which gives you the most efficient ways to edit your videos down without any rework or any wasted time in your editing process. It's also the process that we just followed along in this tutorial. So linked on screen is a copy to that. It's also linked in the description below, and I'll see you soon.